We're now going to play an extract from Dr. King's lecture on the spirit realms, where he describes a hypothetical case of your everyday businessman passing on to the spirit realms and a basic summary of the sequence of events. Let's take a hypothetical case, a businessman. Generally, businessmen are not enlightened individuals. He hasn't thought about the greater things in life, only about his own little tiny selfish world, which makes him an extremely unenlightened person. He has a heart attack, he passes on. A part of his structure uh, uh, contains his full consciousness, and this goes on to another realm. Now, in this body, he is just as physical as ever he was on earth. Let us not get that wrong either. This is where the spiritualists, uh, those in England anyway, slip up very badly. They seem to think that when a person passes on, he is in a non-physical body. This is not correct. In order to understand what happens when we die, we first need to understand a bit about the auric body. We are not just the physical body that you see. Around the physical body is a psychic counterpart called the aura. This aura is a psychic reflection of the body. It not only reflects the state of physical health, the emotions and psychic development, but it is the part of ourselves that does not die and disintegrate with the physical body, but which moves on after death to a different realm of existence around this earth. Because the aura contains our memory and personality, then this also goes with us when we die, so we do not forget who we are or who we knew. Now before you all start visualising dead people as oval globules of light and colour floating around after death, I just want to clarify that this is not the case. The realms we travel to after death are just as physical as this realm, only they are on a different vibration of existence. And because this is the same vibration that the aura is on, then the auric body appears as physical as we appear now. These realms are just like the earth that we know of. They have trees, mountains, rivers and houses. But the spirit realms are more mental than the physical. For instance, you may be able to manifest things through mental visualization. So what happens when we die? The physical body and the auric body are connected together by what is termed the silver cord. This is an etheric cord located at the back of the neck which connects these two bodies together. A person who has a near-death experience is able to come back to life again because the cord has not been broken. Once it is, then the physical body can no longer be inhabited. If you, the spirit, were to try to get back into the body, you would flop right out again. Dr. King explained the transition of death from the physical realm to life on the spirit realms into three distinct experiences. The first being a move from the physical realm through death and to what he termed a realm of waiting. This is a place of gradual realization or transition, a recognition of where you are and why you are there. You wait for further instruction and are looked after by people who have given themselves the task of caring for those who have died suddenly or who may need healing. Often when people die they have no preconception of life after death. It can be a bit of a shock for them so you would stay in this realm of waiting for as long as needed to adjust to the transition of life after death. For some people this may only be 15 minutes. For others it may be as long as a year. Now following the realm of waiting you move on to the second stage which Dr. King termed the realm of deserts. You may have noticed that I keep referring to the spirit realms in plural rather than the singular spirit realm. This is because there is more than one realm of existence beyond this physical. In fact, there are ten 
distinctly separate spirit realms. And we're going to talk more about these in a moment. Now, the third stage that Dr. King referred to is called the Hall of Self-Judgment, a place where we visit before we reincarnate back on earth, and there we are guided by a higher power to look more closely at our past actions and help to determine the set of experiences we need to have in our next life in order to help us on our pathway to spiritual evolvement. So to summarize the cycle of life and death, we are living on the physical realm, we die, we move to the realm of waiting, then we move to the realm of deserts, then we visit the hall of self-judgment, we then return to the realm of deserts to await our rebirth, and we're born back again onto the physical. And this cycle continues to repeat itself until we're able to reach the advanced stage of spiritual enlightenment and then ascension. And we've talked about these states in prior programs of Mystic FM, and these can be found on our website, www.tas.co.nz. We're now going to play an extract from Dr. King's lecture on the spirit realms, where he describes a hypothetical case of your everyday businessman passing on to the spirit realms, and a basic summary of the sequence of events. Let's take a hypothetical case. A businessman. Generally, businessmen are not enlightened individuals. He hasn't thought about the greater things in life, only about his own little tiny selfish world, which makes him an extremely unenlightened person. He has a heart attack. He passes on. A part of his structure uh, uh, contains his full consciousness, and this goes on to another realm. Now, in this body, he is just as physical as ever he was on earth. Let us not get that wrong either. This is where the spiritualists, uh, those in England anyway, slip up very badly. They seem to think that when a person passes on, he is in a non-physical body. This is not correct. The auric body, which is around you now, is physical. And this is the part which contains your consciousness, your memory, and your life, and which passes on. Coming back to our unenlightened businessman, uh, he would go to a realm of waiting uh, in order to gain certain instruction and preparation. Uh, he would stay there for a certain length of time. You couldn't say whether it would be 15 minutes or a year, because every case would have to be judged individually uh, then he would go on to another realm uh, which he deserves to inhabit. I call this second realm the realm of deserts. It depends on how he's lived his life. Uh, in the, our idea of the selfish businessman makes him uh, one of the masses and he would go to and not a very high realm. And there he would gain further experience. He would live on this realm as he has lived upon earth. Uh, we hope not in such a selfish fashion, but nevertheless he would live there for a certain length of time. Again, we can't be a high, we can't be dogmatic and say he'd have to stay there for such and such a time, not at all. He may stay there for five, six, seven, eight years in our time. In his time this might seem a lot longer. Then, of course, and this is where the Aetherius Society gives information uh, which no other society has yet done, to my knowledge, uh, he would go to what the uh, Cosmic Masters call the Hall of Self-Judgment. 
and in the hall of self-judgment he would judge himself. No, nobody is going to judge him, nobody is going to condemn him, but he will learn how to judge himself, be his own judge and jury. He will then begin to impose limitation, or the higher self will begin to impose limitation upon the lower self, and he will then await reincarnation upon earth. He will choose his mother and his father. He will choose, with the help of uh, advisors, the exact time to come back, the exact environment to come back, in order to give him certain lessons, which these advisors, coupled with his higher conscious will, consciousness, will predetermine. Then he will live a life upon earth, then he will die again, uh, and then he will go again to the realm of waiting, and so the cycle will go on and on and on and on until he reaches a certain stage, or until the consciousness reaches a certain stage. Uh, when it does, we know what happens. The Nine Freedoms gives you a complete and full account, the best uh, uh, ever given, uh, upon what happens from that stage on. The Nine Freedoms, which Dr. King refers to, is a book written by him. It's available for purchase through our website, www.tas.co.nz. So let's take a closer look at these realms of deserts, where you'll spend most of your time. As I mentioned earlier, there are ten spirit realms existing on this earth. If we include this physical realm, this means that there are eleven different vibrations of existence of life around this planet. Six of these realms operate on higher vibrational frequencies to where we now are, and four realms operate on a lower vibrational frequency. So the spirit realms themselves are broken into two distinct areas, the higher realms, which are above the physical, and the lower realms, which are below this physical realm. In biblical terminology, this separation between the realms is referred to as heaven and hell. When you move on from the realm of waiting, you will move to the realm that you deserve to go to based on how you have lived your life. This is reflected in the vibration of your aura. If you have been a deeply spiritual person, then the vibrations of your aura will be heightened. You will then pass to the spirit realm that is vibrating most closely to your own aura, which will be, in this case, on the higher realms. Likewise, if you've been a negative, immoral person, the vibrations of your aura will be much lower. When you move to the realm of deserts, you will naturally be attuned to a lower realm. Which realm you pass to is not a punishment. There is no such thing as eternal hell and damnation. You merely pass to the realm which is most in tune to your aura, and therefore most comfortable for you to exist upon. A person of lower vibration would not be able to exist for long upon one of the higher realms, in the same way that a person of a higher vibration would not be able to exist for long on one of the lower realms. Each realm is on a different energy level, and if you were to travel from plane to plane, you would become aware of subtle changes, because the higher up the scale, the more alive it becomes, absolutely scintillating with life and music and colour. Then if you were to move down to the lower realms, they would become darker, with not so much light. Each of the six realms above this physical realm has a higher and higher vibration, just as each of the four realms below this physical becomes lower and lower in vibration. For ease of differentiation between the realms, Dr. King numbered the physical realm as level 1, the higher realms as level 2 to level 7, and the lower realms as level minus 1 to level minus 4. So to simplify this, 